Good afternoon. I am Dr. Pierre Antonio Russo. I'm the chief, a corporate chief medical officer for Spring Hills. Uh, I practiced uh, cardiac surgery for more than two decades. Um, I uh, was lecturing in population medicine at the Harvard Medical School. Um, more recently and prior to uh, joining Spring Hills, uh, I worked um, as medical director at Independence Blue Cross, uh, vice president for medical affairs at Harvard Pilgrim in Boston. And I also was chief medical officer for a, um, an organization that uh, provides um, analytics and machine learning, artificial intelligence analysis based um, work for health plans, health systems, and healthcare in general. Uh, today, uh, we have one of my colleagues, Lisa Scott, who uh, is going to discuss the, um, a specific program that addresses the problem of malnutrition in older adults. I like to frame the problem. Um, malnutrition uh, is an imbalance between uh, the nutrients that one needs and the uh, nutrients that actually uh, one intakes. And it is a real problem that we identified in hospitalized patients in general, but specifically in patients uh, 65 and older, uh, in patients in uh, skilled nursing facilities, and in patients uh, living in assisting living buildings. Uh, Interesting enough, it's not just an issue related to people who have no, ac no access to food or barriers to, uh, um, to food, but it is a problem which is associated with, of course, um, diseases, chronic diseases, patients who are um, polychronic, um, but also it is influenced, of course, by social issues, by gaps in uh, uh, social needs, and physiological changes that are present uh, in uh, the normal aging process. While we're aging, uh, the um, certain changes occur in, uh, uh, in our physiology, and uh, we need to take that in consideration when we do our assessment of uh, the patients with malnutrition. Uh, the stomach, for example, um, tends to be less compliant tends to have problems with distension, and therefore one feels uh, full uh, after even a small meal. Um, there are changes in our hormonal, um, the, the, the proteins that uh, are present in, uh, in the stomach, in the guts, that control uh, appetite. And um, there is something called anorexia uh, of, the, um, of the old adult and uh, anorexia means that the, 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 some of these uh, individuals really started very early on uh, in their aging process of not feeling hungry. And that leads to uh, obviously malnutrition in terms of total caloric intake, but also uh, specific malnutrition of vitamins and uh, proteins and mm. imbalance between uh, the uh, appropriate caloric intake but also the type of calories that one uh, uh, should uh, ingest. Um, a patient who is 70 and older should probably take uh, in no more, uh, more than, uh, than 60 to 70 pr uh, grams of proteins a day. And in reality, uh, we know that patients discharged from the hospital, discharged from the skilled nursing facility, many patients in assisting livings uh, are well below that amount on, of daily intake of proteins. Uh, patients who have anemia, um, uh, and that anemia is manifested in uh, uh, the changes in uh, the, for example, in uh, the um, uh, nails. Uh, one examining uh, nails of patients who have significant anemia can immediately identify the problem with this uh, dystrophy of the, of the nails. Uh, patients who have uh, problems with uh, dental um, health. Mm -hmm. um, these are all patients who, who we identify in, uh, in uh, patient discharge from the hospital, patients in the skilled nurse facility in our assisted living. So um, Lisa will talk to you about the uh, problems that we see 
uh, in our own skilled nursing facilities and in our own uh, assisted living, and how we have decided to address um, this issue that may actually uh, impact um, as many as 20 to 30 percent of the patient discharged from the hospital, of course having uh, serious diseases and being uh, old adult, and definitely um, uh, as many as 40% uh, of the patient in skilled nursing facilities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lisa, please um, go ahead and introduce yourself and um, tell us about the program. And then, of course, I will ask you some questions more specific about the implementation of the program in across our organization. Thank you, Dr. Russo. My name is uh, Lisa Scott. I'm VP of Clinical Services and Program Development for Spring Hills. I'm a registered nurse. Um, for 30 plus years, and I've been with Spring Hills for 17 years. Um, the program that, that I um, wrote for Spring Hills, for our company, um, uh, is based on malnutrition prevention, because preventing malnutrition in our residents early on, um, as early as when they first come into our community, um, gives us the ability to intervene quickly. Um, so the first thing we want to do is to diagnose the problem, right? And so once the problem is diagnosed, then we can go about treating it. And okay, let's talk about diagnosis. So mm -hmm. how do you assess a patient uh, who potentially is at risk of malnutrition? Because if I understand correctly, uh, you want to focus first, or you have been focusing first uh, particularly in the assisted living, in a prevention. Right. Uh, of course, I'm sure you are going to find also, uh, like uh, we found uh, in uh, in population health management um, um, enrollees and in a skilled nursing facility patients who are already malnourished. Exactly. But how do you do? The, how do you diagnose? How do you assess a patient uh, um, in your program? Right. So first, we go about doing an assessment, and it's called a nutritional risk assessment. Um, we do that early on, on the, the first of admission, along with our resident evaluation, to determine if this person is at risk or already um, malnourished. Um, as you stated before, oftentimes um, a, a senior person goes without being diagnosed as being mal, uh, malnourished because they have other comorbidities as well that can mimic some of the same, same signs and symptoms um, as malnutrition. So the first sign is weight loss, right? The first sign, and that's unattentional weight loss. But then some of the other signs of malnutrition also mimic other things like depression, right? Depression um, can be um, a part of the malnutrition, the process of being malnourished because you're pre depressed and you, you're not eating, right? But also it could be that you are not eating, so that leads to depression. So we want to um, look at the malnutrition, but also you want to look at the underlying causes, right? right? Another example so is fatigue, right? Yes. So patients, of course, who have cardiovascular disease, they are fatigued, uh, particularly if they have uh, heart failure. But in fact, that heart failure is partially responsible for that malaise fatigue. P perhaps the patient is anemic, right? right? Or uh, the patient has uh, other um, vitamin deficiencies, like niacin mm. deficiency, which is a classic um, uh, deficiency in older uh, patients. So I'm sure you are, you are going to do a clinical assessment and right. then more specific, you're going to measure uh, certain parameters. Right. Can you right. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so part of the assessment is um, getting a baseline weight, getting baseline vital signs, particularly the weight, the height, and, and of course the, the, the BMI, right? Those things are Can very important. Can you explain important. what the BMI is for people who are not uh, in medicine? Yes, um, the BM, BMI measures how much um, uh, fat the person has um, uh, you know, on their body, how much fat the person has on their body. And once that's the, the, the 
baseline for that is between 18.5 and 24. Those are the normal BMIs. And so when you fall below that to 17, 16, 17, then that's indicative of someone that's malnourished, right? Because that's a very low number. And of course, um, there is another term, another definition that I like to introduce and, and you can help us uh, um, extrapolate the, the, the meaning for uh, your patient, sarcopenia. Yes. So when a patient has uh, um, reduced muscle mass, mm -hmm. right? So um, patients may have an imbalance between fat and muscle. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as a normal aging process, the, uh, the, the muscle mass reduces and the fat component um, increases, in right. right? So how do you assess a patient who has poor muscle mass? Right, so, but basically when you're assessing that, you're, you're, you're looking at the person's um, uh, weight um, and opposed to how much muscle that that individual um, right. has on their body. And we know that seniors lose uh, a great uh, amount of muscle as they're, a as right. they're aging. So that's, that's a normal process to happen. But um, you also can look at how that is um, uh, utilized in someone's body when it comes to nutrition. So you want to look at that person's diet. What are, what are they eating? Because not all the nutrients can be um, absorbed right. um, if you have a, a deficit. Exactly, so, mal so exactly, there is a malabsorption due to, again, physiological changes, mm -hmm. not necessarily disease. Uh, there is low t slow transit, there are hormonal changes in the gut. Mm -hmm. And for our audience, uh, I mean, there are obviously techniques um, very advanced, li like uh, bioelectric techniques, the DEXA, Mm -hmm. uh, advanced technique to, uh, to, to, to measure uh, muscle mass uh, versus fat mass, mm -hmm. but one of the, uh, the uh, approach that in physical exam one can just look at is the circumference of the medium right. um, portion of the um, uh, muscles in, in the arm mm -hmm. and the skin folder uh, right. in the upper arm. And anything that, um, and, and then one would subtract the uh, skin folder measurement from the circumference of the muscle in the upper arm mm -hmm. and anything uh, 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 around 60 means malnutrition, severe malnutrition. Right, around so 90 is already, is, is already malnutrition. Right. So there are various techniques. So tell us exactly, uh, so a patient comes um, to you, well actually first a resident, let's talk a about resident. the resident in, right. the, in the assisted living facility. So you're going to do a complete assessment. Yes, complete to assessment. To prevent what may can happen. And then we can discuss what you do if you actually find that the patient has already malnutrition um, of a certain degree. Right, so like I um, mentioned um, before, you wanna do the complete assessment and then you wanna do the nutritional assessment along with it. But what's important is that your staff, your team, recognize what malnutrition looks like, right? And to get the whole team involved. So then you need to make sure that you have your dietitians involved. So you have your dining service um, department involved. Um, of course, the physician, your nurses, right? Your, your, the caregivers, the families. So everyone needs to be involved to, um, to make sure that if this person is malnourished, that you are going to be able to intervene. Um, and if they are not, you want to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't happen. So you need to be able to diagnose and then recognize um, malnutrition. And so it starts with the team. Also, one of the one of the uh, issues that um, that we face in healthcare is when our residents or patients, for that matter, are hospitalized. It's not recognized. Right. It's not something that's recognized right away. Actually, twenty to fifty percent of residents or patients. Um, don't even get a diagnosis of malnutrition That's and they right. come into the hospital with malnutrition and they leave the hospital with malnutrition and so um, some of the programs that we have in place as well like our population health that could um, move with the resident from uh, the hospital or from a long-term care or post-acute 
into their home and be able to use these assessment to tools, the nutritional risk assessment or the mini nutritional um, assessment to diagnose and treat malnutrition so that this person does not have a readmission because that can, uh, you know, is one of the main reasons why our seniors return um, to the hospital right. because it affects so many different organs in their bodies when you're malnourished that uh, underlying cause of, of, of uh, cause of heart disease, of uh, diabetes, of any kind of skin issues, all of that would be exacerbated if um, they're malnourished. Yeah, and uh, just to um, reinforce what you are saying, let's take the classical example of patients with heart failure, which are usually at the top of the readmission list uh, to the hospital after a previous hospitalization within 30 to 60 days. A patient who is anemic, even if uh, has, and again, let's define anemia, anything for a male below 12 and um, for a, a woman probably around 11 to 10. And again, I'm talking about more of the older patients that now than uh, older adults than younger people, uh, where in fact you are looking for 14, 15 for a male and 12 to 13 for a woman. But um, you can have the best possible treatment with drugs in a patient uh, with heart failure, but if that patient is anemic, obviously for various physiological reasons and we don't have the time to discuss it, that patient is at very high risk of readmission. So it is just to reinforce, that, just to give you an example of mm -hmm. what you were mm -hmm. just saying. Now, can you t tell us a little bit, can you describe or give us example of the tools that you're using um, you mentioned the mini assessment. Yeah, the uh, mini nutritional assessment. Um, that's 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 a, a nutrition assessment tool that we introduce, and that's done quarterly. But the the main one is the one that's done on admission, and that's the nutritional risk because you're identifying the problem, which often gets unidentified. So that's that's the main um, tools that we use. So you ask that. them, uh, you ask uh, your resident or patient in the skilled nursing facility, uh, what they eat and what, uh, if their habits have changed, right? Right, you, yes. If you are doing a physical exam, you're looking at their skin, a scaling skill, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a, a sign of um, vitamin A deficiency or vitamin C deficiencies. Many old uh, adults have um, bruises. Right. Care, and that is a vitamin C or right. vitamin K problem. Uh, they miss niacin which is they have a, 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 a deficiency of niacin, which is essential to build, uh, to, to use the energy, right. the nutrients that we're using and transforming energy. So you're doing a physical exam and then you weight them, right? You, you they, we the weigh weight. them for the baseline weight and then um, if they're found to be malnourished, then their program will be different. So it'll be weekly weights for them. We, of course, the physician is involved. We may use sub, uh, supplements, diet supplements um, for them. We'll look at their medications to see what medications might be interfering with because what they Because some medication eat. may prevent That's the right. patient to feel hungry, right? Right. They, they actually are responsible for the uh, for, for, for the anorexia, right. as we were discussing, right. the lack um, of appetite. The, <coughs> excuse me, the dietitian then is involved as well, um, um, and they, they're looking at the, the resident as a whole on a monthly basis. Um, PT, physical therapy, um, uh, needs to be involved in maybe even um, occupational therapy and speech, right, because they could be swallowing issues, um, that's happening. So we want to make sure dental. that we touch dental. dental yes, oh. we want to make sure that we touch on all the bases because malnutrition is not just in the gut. Of course, it affects every part right. of of the person. And so we're looking at every part of the person to make sure that um, we are uh, touching on the underlying problems as well. Yeah. And also, I like to remind everyone that um, the one of the, um, uh, besides vitamin deficiency, protein deficiency is a very, very well known issue in old adults, but also an imbalance between uh, uh, the the quality of proteins, right? Because proteins are built with amino acids, 
and some amino acids are actually uh, essential amino acids and if we don't take them uh, through a combination of plant-based and um, uh, uh, animal-based proteins uh, we may end up with um, uh, ab ab absorbing um, pro uh, quality of proteins which is not the ideal combination that we want right so I'm sure that your your dietitian will look at all uh, the issues related to the total caloric intake, the balance between carbohydrates and uh, proteins mm -hmm. and fat, because obviously we need some mm -hmm. um, some type of go good quality mm -hmm. uh, fat. And uh, are you doing any uh, lab work? Yes, and 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 I just want to say that typically you don't find a malnutrition prevention program in assi in assisted living. That's right. I mean, it's hard pressed to find it in other uh, healthcare entities, but certainly not in assisted living. So I think this is very unique um, for us to have right. this in it's place. It's a differentiator, no question. Yes, um, but also to take the opportunity, I think, um, with the changes that we have um, since COVID. Um, to use other methods of making sure that our residents and patients outside stay healthy. And one of those is telehealth, right? Because this is a great opportunity for the use of telehealth. If seniors- Which of course we have. We have, all across yes, the organization. yes. Yeah. If, if, you're, if the patient is not able to go out to the doctor, right? You can have that telehealth conference with that, with that person and, and talk about the things that may be affecting them. With your dietitian. Them, dietitian with nurses. With your primary, with your nurses. Social. To be able, yes, social workers to be able to intervene. Because again, malnutrition is something that is missed. Quite often it's missed and it has such a profound effect on so many other parts um, uh, of that person's life or what's going on with, with, their, with their body. And what you are saying reminds me uh, of the fact that, again, uh, we need to take care of the whole person and not just the disease. Certainly. Um, this is why you men we mentioned uh, the social uh, worker, um, someone who can help with the isolation that uh, many of these um, old adult suffer of, mm -hmm. um, that then induces depression and other um, cascade of complications. Uh, some of them, um, maybe not in the assisted living, but certainly in the hospital or in other um, part of our organization, uh, may have uh, problems accessing good food, right? Fresh food and, 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 and that balanced diet. How do you, I have two questions for you. How do you address uh, cultural differences, of course, because we need to be sensitive to, uh, to mm -hmm. the cultural um, uh, background of, the, of, the, of our residents and patients. And uh, how do you address um, social gaps? Well, for the cultural um, at Spring Hills, we, we have a, a very vast menu. It's very diverse. We offer a variety of foods. Um, to be exact, we, we offer like 14 entrees. Oh. Um, so residents have a great choice um, for, for foods. But if there is any type of uh, gaps, say in care again, you wanna go back to using the resources that we have and that's in telehealth, that's our home health, using uh, third party providers that can come into uh, assisted living into our community to be in addition to our services. And so this allows us then to um, recognize, um, you know, the opportunity to prevent um, our residents from, from succumbing to malnutrition. And I, I, you know, I believe this program is new for us, so, but I believe that once we start to collect the, the data, once we start to um, uh, doing all the assessments for our residents, we're, we're probably going to be surprised that we have, even with, with all of the um, amenities that we do have, that we probably have a great deal of residents that um, are, is, is, is malnourished. Yeah. And, and I think that 
because of COVID and the isolation and the residents staying in their rooms and eating in their rooms and not in dining rooms where you're, you're visible and you're socializing and, and you're gonna eat more, I think we're gonna recognize that we have quite a bit of, of residents that's yeah, gonna fall into this category even with the vast amount of resources that we have. Because obviously, uh, in addition to the psychological issues, the, psych so the, the social issues that you just described, then we have potentially the complications related to uh, polychronic conditions, mm -hmm. so multiple chronic conditions that some of this old adult uh, experience. And most importantly, there is, a, as I mentioned at the beginning, a physiological process uh, that in, uh, within the aging um, process that uh, it triggers uh, the mm -hmm. uh, complication that then lead to mal malnutrition, right? right? So the malabsorption, the, 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 um, the sense of uh, uh, fullness uh, because the stomach doesn't dilate, uh, like, you know, in a, in, a, in a 20 years old, right? Right. And then uh, the, all the hormonal changes that tell the brain that stop eating, right? So all these factors um, are, should be taken in consideration, and of course it seems that the program, which again is unique um, to our facilities and uh, to, to Spring Hills, um, address all those multifactorial causes for uh, potential malnutrition, and then when the malnutrition is identified, uh, you are going to have the appropriate experts to help solving uh, the uh, problem. Right, and I think um, also what, what we're going to see, and I'm really hoping for this outcome, is that we're going to be able to extend the lives of our residents in our communities. Because when malnutrition, again, is recognized, then you can look at the other problems that, that may come about, the falls in the community, the um, skin integrity um, issues, um, you know, uh, depression that we, we mentioned before, um, you know. Cognitive dysfunction. Yes, and gut Without issues. Without even discussing Alzheimer's, right. just, just a right. reduction in cognitive function. Yeah. Right, so um, I, I think we're, we're gonna see that we're, we're gonna be able to extend the lives of our residents and our communities, and that, that's just, uh, that's wonderful. That's what we're here for, that's what we want. When do you um, expect do? the first batch of data to be available? Um, from the assisted living. Right, I'm hoping that the first quarter of uh, 2022, so by the end of March, beginning of April. So should we should be I able think, to report mm -hmm, already. We should then. be able to, uh, I think all of our residents will be assessed um, uh, by then, of course, and we will be, we'll be able to see what, uh, what we, the percentage we have in our community and then get to work on making sure that those residents um, stay healthy and get healthy. If someone uh, is interested in uh, the details of the program, where can they find the, um, do you have brochures? Do you have, the, uh, do you have it online? Uh, uh, where can we find uh, the details? The <coughs> excuse me, the brochures are being made up now, so Maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll have the brochures done. The manual is already written, it's done and packaged. Um, uh, it's not on the website yet, it's on- But it will be. It will be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. Well, this concludes. Okay, perfect. The first step is if you're in assistant living, you can ask um, the nurse, nurse is there. Um, if not, if you're at home, you can talk to your physician yeah. and, um, and ask to, to be evaluated yeah. for malnutrition. And, and the first sign too, remember, is weight loss. Weight loss is the first sign. So, and that's five to 10% um, of your, your normal body weight. Yeah. unintentional weight loss. Yeah, and uh, I would add, I completely agree with Lisa, I would add that um, to me, uh, one of the, as a physician, one of the problems that I see beside the weight loss is uh, actually dehydration. Uh, the skin is very dry. Yes. Um, and uh, then I look for bruises, 
um, because that tells me if the patient is not on uh, blood thinners that um, there may be issues with the uh, fragility uh, of, the, uh, uh, the, of the vessel, the blood vessels, and that usually is associated with deficiency of vitamin C or vitamin K. I, I would look at um, the skin. Uh, mm. scale, uh, skin is definitely a sign of uh, vitamin A deficiency. Um, and don't forget the, the urine because the urine, the urine is, is a, the color a key. The yes, urine. the color of, of the urine. For, and for we are actually in the manual, we have a urine chart right. that shows you um, the what, for the yes, what, yes, what your urine should look like and what it shouldn't, which is very interesting. But as a family member, definitely one of the first sign again, is weight loss. But why? Is the pay because weight loss could be also due to other conditions. Uh, so assuming that um, the physicians, um, uh, various physicians that I'm sure some of these patients are on, uh, are seeing exclude any major uh, disease like cancer, for example, heart disease, then that weight loss is definitely associated with uh, inability to absorb uh, or even inability to, uh, to, to feel uh, um, uh, the, the desire to, to eat. Uh, and so that is the anorexia that we were discussing. And, uh, and so um, that, together with changes in, uh, in the physical appearance, uh, definitely is an indication that something else needs to be done for the patient. And, and help is on its way. I mean, it, it help is, is available, uh, not only by changing uh, the, the, all the factors, um, or influencing the factors that may have caused that malnutrition, but there also are drugs, right? Um, there are drugs that uh, actually stimulate the appetite. Mm -hmm. um, hormonal um, support, for example, um, testosterone. Um, there are very, ma very others, many other um, uh, drugs that helps in the most extreme cases. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um, now that we, we have some information about malnutrition, you can uh, look for it because diagnosing is the first step toward prevention. Right. And again, we, we focus most of the discussion today on uh, the living, assisting living facility within our organization. But we see, again, I want to remind everyone, we see the problem in any patient discharged from hospitals, uh, particularly after long hospital stay in polychronic patients. And we, we see it every day, uh, particularly dehydration in patients in, uh, um, who are on diuretics, for example, um, patients who are on multiple, di uh, uh, multiple drugs. So it is a, uh, I would say that probably uh, one out of two old adult uh, currently in this country are at the very least at risk of becoming malnourished and about 20 to 30 percent indeed uh, discharged from the hospital or, 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 in, or from the school nurse facility and uh, in the assisted living are indeed malnourished. Thank you. Thank you very much.